study and uh, I'm welcoming those that uh, uh, watch the online and maybe they're not doing it right now maybe they'll do it next week or next year and hopefully um, <clears throat> that uh, in time I, I don't know how well my presentation is but I hope that you know over time they just get rid of that <laughs> like footage they do when you're walking around Walmart so um, I'm I'm going to I'm going to start this lesson out slowly and I have a few questions to ask you guys but overall um, it's uh, it's 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 almost like a five or six part lesson so that it's uh, each day is a little different than the next and there's all kinds of material in here that a guy can talk about oh I mean, I could tell a million stories and such. I won't do that this morning, but um, uh, each each day's different. So uh, it's the end of the study of Hebrews, and um, I'm I'm not a um, PhD and Bible scholar uh, education. So when I say these things, um, don't. Don't, well, don't judge me too much, okay? Don't judge me too harshly. But when I looked at Hebrews, and it ended here, really, in our last one, with a lot of chapter 13, okay? In my mind, through the years, I always thought that Hebrews was at least 25, 30 chapters. Now, Hebrews is a short book. Chapter 13 wraps it all up. That's what this lesson that we're going to talk about today uh, uh, the authors that put this lesson together, uh, it's just, uh, I felt it was kind of a wrap it all up. And if you look in chapter 13 in Hebrews, if they do it, you know, I think it's Paul. He, um, there's a whole lot of different um, ideas that are thrown together in chapter 13. And some of them doesn't, is there a fancy word? Do, they don't segue into the next one. He just like starts on saying one thing and then he's, Starts on a different subject, but doesn't matter. They're all good. But me, I thought to myself, 13 chapters. My mind, I thought there was 20, 25. But anyway, the text for Saturdays is let brotherly love continue. Hebrews 13, 1. And right here from the King James, let brotherly love continue. And the author here on Saturday, without me reading this, presented the idea that uh, the Christian lifestyle, or, or if you pursue Christianity, it's not just yourself. With these, um, the verse that I just read, that it's going to be about you and somebody else. Um, some people you're going to meet. Maybe it's going to be this church. Uh, maybe it'll be your family. But the, the Christian experience is not just individual. Now, I'm, I'm going to cover these chronological, uh, but I'm just going to look at, just touch on this, maybe for uh, the people that would be watching online at a later date. But Sunday, the big thing on Sunday is, is that uh, caring for God's people. That's the hospitality one. Okay, Sunday, Sunday is about being hospitable. Monday, Monday, they group two things together. Like I was telling you, this is just wrapping it up. Two things together. They're talking about this early church and they're, they're talking about those people that were living in AD, oh, I don't know, 60, 70. I mean, 2,000 years ago, they're talking to that church. And one of them was about covetousness and sexual immortality. That's on Monday. 
that was kind of watch out, don't fall in those traps. Tuesday, Tuesday was an interesting one. Remember your leaders. Now, here in the Seventh day Adventist Church, we, I'm going to say just as I move on, this is, I'm, I'm going to let people talk today or we're not going to do 45 minutes. But that, on Tuesday, remember your leaders. That, that kind of strikes me as odd a little bit because I, I feel that the, just myself, the one refreshing thing about the Seventh-day Adventist Church is that um, that uh, the decisions I make are biblical or are in there. And as a group, if you feel I'm out of line, you could say, go read Hebrews 13, Kevin. I say, okay. But the one thing I find refreshing is, is that if somebody's wearing a suit and tie and says, I'm, I'm paid by the Seventh-day Adventist Church to correct you, Kevin Ripper. <laughs> I go, really? You get a wage, too. <laughs> so you see where I'm going with this, is that when it says, remember your leaders, they're like, wait, wait a second. The leaders of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, they turn the lights on. They make sure the bills are paid. What more do they do? Okay, well, we're going to talk about that. Okay, because, but you see where I'm going with this. I don't want to put down any other religions, and there's tons of them out there. But, you know, there's certain labels like president or bishop. You know, there's labels that, that they're not bad, but I've I always kind of liked knowing that um, just because you get your turn being lesson teacher study person doesn't mean you've gone up too high on the totem pole, okay? Doesn't get, you don't even know rights. So anyway, that's, remember the leaders. Wednesday, oh, this is a good one. Beware of diverse and strange teachings. Now, this one doesn't go too, we'll read that verse. Paul was just kind of, there wasn't a lot of crazy stuff going around, but he was just saying, hey, um, Rain it in a little bit here, you know. I think he had to say that because the Christian church was just starting, you know. Things were, and I, I, when you look at this one, he was trying to tell them, you know, what are our goals going to be? And I'm going to come back to that with being leaders. I'm going to mention that, goals, okay. Um, Thursday, uh, go to Jesus outside the camp. Hebrews, we're going to read that about what outside the camp was. Paul was referring, come kind of back when Moses and the people were in the camp area. And um, he, he brings that back to, well, brings it up to date. Um, I know I mentioned on Saturday about brotherly love. And Sunday's lesson is the same thing. It's about being hospitable, and they give a bunch of verses there. You don't, you guys don't mind. I'm going to read one of them, okay? And it's because it's Hebrews um, 1 and 2, and you already heard one. Uh, Let brotherly love continue. Verse 2 is, Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Uh, again, I've heard that verse many times. And uh, here it is in Hebrews. And I probably remember it now. You know, we go to church enough, you start remembering where those verses come from. Probably going to remember this. So they're talking about being hospitable. And the word shows up in another verse right there. But it shows up in some of these others. Uh, the word's right there in the King James Version, hospitable. And here a couple weeks ago in a lesson study, it was the question was asked. I wasn't teaching; I was just part of it. And the lesson study, it was brought up. Uh, what's the difference between being humble and being selfless? And it, it wasn't self denial; it was self. There's another word for it, but being humble, just naturally being humble, or being humble if you're not versus being selfless. And I, I came up with, uh, I'm go, I'm, where I'm going with this is being hospitable eventually. But I said the difference between the two is you've heard those stories where somebody that's not humble, that's got a lot of pride, 
Uh, you know, where they went to school counts. What they do for a living counts. Those Where they live counts. And um, those things count. And they don't rub your nose in it, but you could see that, oh yeah, that counts. And then all of a sudden, that person one time looks over at somebody, and I, I mean, just obscure it. They look over at, maybe it's a car accident. Maybe it was the Titanic, and they're on a lifeboat. Maybe, again, like I said, whatever it was. And that person, that it counts where they went to school, what their job is, who they're married to. That one person looks over at the next person and says, here, you need a coat. And I said, that's the difference between being humble and being selfless. You could have somebody that's not humble, but they can do a selfless act. Now, in this class, so you mentioned, yeah, you always wonder, what are their motives? <laughs> you know, if somebody has that pride, all of a sudden, you're being nice now. But it has happened. I think they've, you've read stories. I can't say where it has, but it has. There's some people that can be full of themselves, but all of a sudden, that right time that right moment they do a selfless act so you need this right now okay so hospitable this is paul talking about uh this church is 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 it's not going to work unless you 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 as uh leaders or you as members are going to be hospitable maybe to each other maybe to strangers oh, yeah. But no, we're, I'll answer it. Yeah, I heard what was said. Sometimes I don't hear on Why is it so hard to continue with brotherly love and today? Today, in this day and age. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, yeah. It, it, uh, um, there was, I went to, I, it's not even the Bible. I, maybe it was one of those, you have, you've heard, it must have been a politician saying, like Abraham Lincoln, George Washington. But I was, I was uh, in college, say I was 20 years old, going to church. Seventh-day Adventist Church, wasn't in South Dakota, doesn't matter, but this one gentleman, who probably been the age of my grandpa at that time, so he was probably in his late 60s, pushing 70, he said, familiarity breeds enmity. I was like, what's that mean? And I thought about it for a long time, and I was like, yeah, I know, I finally figured out what that meant. It's what you just said. If you end up really getting to know somebody... You're being friendly, and, and, and then all of a sudden, you're like, because you brought up, like, you do what? <laughs> and so and the thing is, is, then you get to know somebody, and then it's like, okay. No, it's not. But see, that's the thing is, is I left with the riddle. He said, familiarity breeds enmity. I'm not saying he was, he wasn't even the leader that, he wasn't the teacher that, he was just listening that day. But I seen what he said. So you're, yeah, I'm glad you're finishing it. That ain't solution. The solution is, is you've got to get to the point where you just got to let it go. Being nice is just being nice. The, the, when they said the, this gentleman said familiarity breeds enmity too, there, it, it goes both ways too. When he said that, it wasn't that, well, I get to know you, I'm going to judge you. No, what he was also saying is, and I've learned this too by this statement, this was the deep part of that statement, is that I'm going to be nice to somebody, and, but when you find out maybe some of the things I stand for, and you understand, or you start going, my makeup, then all of a sudden, you know some things about me. Not like evil, bad things, but what my job is, or maybe maybe who I voted for. But once you start getting to know me, then you start disliking me too. Because maybe some of the things that I did, you know, maybe hurt something. You, I mean, it goes both ways. Familiarity breeds enmity. I mean, it's a, it's a hurtful road. It is. And, and like you just said, well, how do you get past that? Because it's, so it goes both ways. When, when you, there, when I said that, it was almost like, well, I'm really nice to, and then I start judging. So, no, I, I, even the community, not, not even church, that stuff that I do, if um, I do a lot of farming, well, I'm, my business is farming and ranching, but the, the minute the minute you tell somebody you use a product line or you drive this kind of tractor, you do this, you're sparking a fight. I mean, you just, well, just, yeah, familiarity breeds enmity. It's a, it's a bad road, but you got to get past it. Now, 
Why isn't there so many brotherly love? I was going to mention this too, too today. I feel that, um, okay, we all heard Jack and the Beanstalk story. Jack was his name. He got took on that road, didn't he? Because he sold his horse or his what? His cow for magic Bitcoin? No, beans, all right? It wasn't Bitcoin. It was beans, all right? So he sold for beans. He got took. All right, those are Grimm's fairy tales, aren't they? I mean, somebody come up with a load of those, Three Little Pigs and all those stories. But that was about their shady characters. True? Okay, where am I going this? Why is there so much distress and no brotherly love today? It's because Grimm's fairy tales teaches you that you can't trust those shady characters. All right? Are they still shady characters in today's world? Of course there is. But where's the distrust coming from nowadays? It's because back in Jack and the Beanstalk time, you were supposed to, the people that cleaned up, you could trust. Supposedly, there's a million stories that they took them to. But, but nowadays, I really believe we live in a generation that the scams are there everywhere. And they're suit and ties. There, I just read here today, watch out for a scam on Facebook. You understand? Today, things are supposed to work. Your computer should be safe. This should be safe. It's not safe. So I'm, I, to answer that question, brother, love, today there, if somebody asks you for a sandwich, you, this is a scam. Are you really hungry? What's the scam? And I really believe that today. Why is it different than Jack and the Beanstalk time? Because back then they were saying, don't trust the guy on a road that that sell, do you, do you ask him, do you always sell magic beans? No, today, you assume that things are sp supposed to be safe. Y you do. And, and I, really be I really believe that. I really believe that there's a distrust of anything. You just, you, you, you can't. Now, without me going in all those scams, you know, you, everybody could tell. But the, they're real. They're out there. Okay? My wife, just a quick, not a wow factor. Wife works with some ladies at work. Nurses and doctors. College educated. Got a phone call. Um, the sheriff's department it needed because there was a um, failure to show up in a court case or whatever. And you're going to have to pay a fine or whatever. Um, this lady was in a hurry. Okay, I'll pay the fine. It didn't do it with a credit card. Did it with, I, I don't know, you buy these coupon cards at Walmart or something. Anyway, she got took for $2,500, whatever. Okay, the thing is, is the thing is, she's at her work. Oh, the smartphone rings up. It says, it says it's Pennington County Sheriff's Deputy. Okay, anyway, you've heard the stories. This is just the last few months. You asked... Today, we, we, we used to, when I was a kid, we used to do in-gathering at Christmas time. You, you go and sometimes you sing carols. But things have changed. Nobody wants anybody knocking on their door at 7 o'clock at night. Nobody does. And I'll tell you what, nobody wants to talk about this. But it's true. Okay, I'm doing the brotherly love thing here. Why is it different? I really believe because you can't trust what you're seeing anymore. And I know it's always been that way, but it's getting really slick today. Nobody wants to get burned. So if somebody wants help or needs help, it's hard to discern anymore. Is that real? I have to tell my kids. All right, hey, we're going to talk positive stuff. But I have to tell my kids, normally, Walmart parking or whatever, if there's a woman that needs help, probably a safe zone. But the ultimate trap is if there's some guy waiting around the corner and he's got the woman helping the trick. It's hard to make that discernment. If there's little kids and a woman, it's all right.
probably all right. If kids are in the mix, that situation that you see is probably what it is, and it's not a scam. So anyway, I, yeah, I, I talked to somebody about, I'm not going overboard, but what do you tell your own kids? How do you tell what is real and not real? This, is, this has gone way past Jack and the Beanstalk, Magic Beans. How do you, okay, back to hospitable though. This is the positive thing this morning. Given the fact that I can't talk fancy or talk pride about myself, and everybody's going to have a chance here, nobody wants to be prideful, okay? But you got to today, because we've got to be positive. Because brotherly love and hospitality, it says right here, and Paul's saying, hey, you're going to have to turn on the hospitality. Now, I'll tell you what's probably not hospital, so you don't think I'm bragging. And I'm not bragging, because you'll see my story. I had some people out to church a few years ago. We had a good time. I didn't even know them. They, they ended up and then going because they worked at the hospital. And we had a good time at the end of, I said, before they were going, I said, we've had such a good time. I wish I had something to sell to you. And they just chuckled. Oh, what? <laughs> I said, joke. I don't sell anything. We just had a good time. All right. So hospitality. Everybody, well, let's start right here because he, he likes to talk even though he's not. You know, you've seen it all in the comedies, movies, where everybody's like, me, me. Well, he wasn't. When's the last time you were hospitable? Everybody's going to get a chance at this. You too, Melinda. You can brag about yourself. In fact, let's, let's just, because I said I don't want to be negative. Oh, oh, oh. Go, go. Ahead. Okay. Yep. Yes. Yep. Okay, she's talking, I'm just for the online, talking about what Poland's doing in the surrounding countries, Poland being huge, for the Ukraine. People are taking people in. I've read a little bit about that. What's fantastic about that is somehow media doesn't, doesn't ever, see, you know, there's all kinds of stories there. And they say it's happening. But you know there's a family that just said, yeah, we took in five, six people. And you know, I, I go on my news or whatever, and I'll take a positive story any day, but you don't get that. But you know what's happening. You know some guy that maybe drives a bus, and he's got two kids in his house. I just described something. You know he took in some family, him and his wife. Yeah. So, yeah, okay, hospitable. Just it's happening in Poland, Ukraine crisis. Um, because you pulled me over here, Eddie, you got to talk about hospitable. Just tell I mean, I'm telling you to. So just, and maybe, like I said, it don't, today let's use positive because sometimes you help somebody and, you know, it wasn't positive, but well, let's make it a hallmark story today, all right? Where somebody goes, thank you, you know, okay? But we all know that hospitable you don't have to have results like that. We understand that. We No, you just do it to do it and let it go. But today, I'm just asking, give me the hallmark yeah, one. Okay. Yeah, well, okay, what's you... being mentioned is that, that people aren't takers. Sometimes you're being nice to them, and they're like, like this, yeah. That's the hard part. Because what I had mentioned before, well, I'm going to work this way, but what I mentioned before, sometimes people, when you, you do something and people, and, and you put someone at a bad spot. Hey, I'm the, we're going to go ahead. Did you ever read, read To Kill a Mockingbird? Did you? I'll come back to that because that's about pride. Go ahead. Here. Well, I, I think, um, well, the word hospitality I brought up about just being nice to somebody. One thing about hospitality that you brought up over the, uh, uh, is that um, true hospitality means I'm not going to be boss. Meaning that it's almost being like stuck in an elevator with a couple people. You don't get the call of shots. You somehow, um, and, and it's not in a situation you had somebody staying at your house. But the thing is, there's going to be an instance, I don't care if you're standing in an aisle at Walmart. There's going to be a time and a place that 
you, you don't, you got to look over at the other person and say, hey, is this all right? Do you see what I'm saying? Even though you think it's all right, but you're forced to, you're forced, that's what hospitality means is that, is this all right? This, you know, for whether that's going to be three more seconds or if you're going to be living with somebody for two months, you don't get, you don't get to be boss. You can't, there was a guy that told me one time, he said, uh, this is the reverse, that's the negative part. He said, to me, he said, oh yeah, that family, they'll invite you for Christmas dinner. Again, I was, I was 20 years old. He said, yeah, they'll invite you for Christmas dinner. I said, what's wrong with that? And he says, because, he says, you get to eat Christmas dinner, but you're told to sit here. <laughs> I said, what do you mean? And he goes, no, you gotta sit here. Now, I don't know if what here was or that place, but he was trying to let me know that, um, that you get dinner. But you got to sit here. And I, whatever sitting here was, it wasn't that. It was, it was you weren't going to get true hospitality. You're just going to get dinner. I think that's what he was meaning. So, okay, I'm going to do it just so I'm for, I said something negative there. We heard it's positive. It's positive. From the epistle, Peter, positive. Well, what, one, thing, one thing I'm here, hopefully online hearing is that, uh, is that, um, that comes to this hospitality that God, impre God impresses you to reach out or, or something that motivates you there more than just seeing what's needed. Um, well, I'm hearing everybody here. The point I was making about to Kill a Mockingbird took place in the 1930s. If you've read the book, it's about this young girl. <clears throat> she got in a fight with this little boy at school. She was, I don't know, she was in what? Fourth, fifth grade, she got in a fight with a little boy, and her dad, you know, got after her da <clears throat> dad was the local attorney in town, a little small town down south. And it turned out that she, I th I'm not being fair to the book, but she offered part of her lunch to this little boy. And this little boy come from a poor family, and he didn't have food. And sometimes he didn't go to school, and he did not want her offering something. His pride was so huge that he hit her. <laughs> the fact that, and she had, because she was just trying to be nice. Well, the point of the book was pointing out is, is that, um, you know, being hospitable, I, I know it's probably ain't, or not going to be a problem, but people have pride. And, and you, you, you don't just move in and say, yeah, I can do this and you'll be happy and everything. You know, that was the point of that story. No, it didn't make that young boy feel good uh, to be, you know, off a sandwich. He wanted to just make it through the day. Maybe tomorrow he'd have lunch. So and I'm not here to define hospitality, but I mean, it's, I'm throwing that out because it does. It, 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 you, you can't just assume that you're going to make everything good. You can ask, would you like this or that? Um, anyway, that was part of the book that, that I thought was interesting. Um, guys, you know, we got 15 minutes left. I tried to do positive stuff here today. I did. And we're not going to cover covetousness and sexual immorality. That'll get you down. Okay? But we're all here and we're all adults. And it was fair. It was brought up... Uh, Hebrews, Paul, chapter 13, he had just get it out before he ended that. I mean, this is the same chapter he's talking about brotherly love and entertaining angels' underwears. Um, just so, yeah, four and five. Um, no, yeah, four and five. Uh, let your conversation. No, marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled, the whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. I mean, he's just getting finishing this up. Okay, I just wanted to say one thing because in general about this, um, they're talking about covetousness. They're talking about um, uh, selfish, greed, pride. And then, and then you got sexual immorality. But um, <laughs> we're, we're, I'm, I'm not, I don't have all more and long to you know, there's there's an endless talk about this. Well, one thing is is find a balance with uh, 
money is always going to be a problem. And I always thought it was odd that, uh, say, my generation, so to speak, they always referred to the 80s as the decade of greed. I don't know why. I mean, you remember, remember they taught us about when the, uh, uh, you know, what, 1929, the stock market failed and went to the great to, why wasn't it, well, it was the roaring 20s, okay? But I, I, I don't know why, uh, say, my decade when I was in high school, why that was defined as the greed. But apparently, as a society, historically, they look at the United States and say, yeah, you were really greedy then. Okay, now, I'm not worried about that. It was just brought up. This is a personal thing. Paul's bringing it up, and he's bringing it up to the church. He said, that's going to get in the way. And um, we don't got, if there was any comments on this, you can throw it out. But I, the, the whole greed thing, yeah, Paul's saying that's, that's a bad deal. Now, I mentioned it. Just so that you guys know that I looked at chapter 13, these things are all over there. But I want to talk about this one because we got 10 minutes. Remember your leaders. Okay, and I mentioned I started this lesson study out earlier before you guys come in. I said I find a satisfaction that I go to the Seventh day of his church, that the guy that gets up here and does the lesson study, he's no more important than anybody else in the room. In fact, how did they even get him to do it? But the thing is, the Seventh day of his church. They don't have a pecking order that eventually you get to the top. When I say the top, that's the people that pay the bills and turn the lights on. I think we're called presidents and such. But it says, remember your leaders. It said in this chapter, it says, kind of remember the ones that came before and remember the ones that are there now. And so this is the best way that I could define it. Got like five, six less. Best way I can define it in the Seventh-day Adventist Church, remember your leaders means respect that they're goal-oriented. Maybe respect the fact that they're thinking about being hospitable on a global level. Respect the fact that that's where they're going. Other than that, I don't know if I'm going to respect them as an individual. Maybe, maybe some of the stuff they've done. But do, do you understand this? To me, when I read this, it seemed, it's kind of always a danger thing because I always think about that person that you know, making those decisions, he's just like you or you or me. He's just, he just has to get this done. So anyway. we're done with this lesson. And, um, well, I mean, today's study. So if you bow your heads, dear Jesus, thank you for our lesson to study today. And thanks for um, people sharing their ideas. In Jesus' name, amen.